Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're going to be doing questions 13 through 18 of the 2023 US NCO local exam. So this is the states of matter section. Um, let's start with question 13. What is the partial pressure of argon in a gaseous mixture of 3.25 grams argon and 2.28 grams krypton in a 5 liter container at 15 degrees Celsius? So this is a gas question, so we should use uh, PV equals NRT and we want to solve for pressure. So let's isolate pressure. Um, and then fill in the information we need. So we're trying to find out the partial pressure of argon, so let's find out how many moles of argon we have. Uh, we have 3.25 grams of argon, and the molar mass of argon is 39.95 grams per one mole. So that is the number of moles times R. Since we want our pressure in bars, um, we should use this uh, value for R, 08314, uh, liter bar mole times Kelvin and then temperature needs to be in Kelvin so Kelvin is 273 plus your Celsius value so 273 plus 15 is 288 Kelvin and then divided by the volume which is 5 liters and so all we have to do is plug this into our calculator so that comes out to 0 0.390 bar which is answer choice B. Hey everyone, I just wanna say if some of these explanations seem a little fast paced to you, then I have a lot of videos on my channel that are more tutorial based. Uh, they can help you learn the content and then come back to these tests to take full advantage of them. Also, if you're enjoying the video, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. As far as I know, these are the only videos on YouTube that have work solutions for the USNCO. Uh, so a like and a subscription would help it reach more people. Um, and that's it, thanks guys. Enjoy the rest of the video. Okay, let's move on to question 14. Which isomer of C4H10O2 has the highest normal boiling point? Okay, so we have four different structures. There are two structures that we can get rid of immediately. That's B and C. Uh, because B and C uh, have ethers, uh, which, are, which produce uh, weaker dipoles than alcohols, which is what we have in A and D. And so now... Uh, we have to distinguish which one between A and D is going to have the strongest intermolecular forces. B is very tightly packed. Because of this, it's going to have a dipole, but the problem is that there's a lot of steric hindrance. So it's going to be hard for another molecule to come and form a dipole or have a dipole moment with it. In A, the molecule is much longer, and that means uh, there's more opportunities for other molecules to come and form dipoles with that. So A is gonna have the strongest intermolecular forces, therefore is going to have the highest normal boiling point. Let's move on to 15. Which statements about the behavior of gaseous H2 molecules in a container at one atmosphere and 288, 298 Kelvin are correct? Uh, one, all H2 molecules are moving at the same speed. That is not true. Um, all the molecules move at different speeds um, but there is an average speed that you can calculate, but that doesn't necessarily mean that all the molecules are moving at the exact same speed. So one is wrong. Two, the H2 molecules are colliding more frequently with the walls of the container than they would be in the same container uh, at 398 Kelvin. That is also wrong. At 398 Kelvin, they would actually be moving faster. Remember, temperature is just a measure of how fast the particles are moving. So if you have higher temperature, then that means they are moving faster and therefore colliding more frequently with the walls of the container. So one and two are both wrong, so the answer is D. Let's move on to 16. A portion of the phase diagram of uranium hexafluoride is shown below. Which statements are correct? So let's quickly just uh, label the parts of this um, phase diagram. So this would be the solid, this would be the gas, and this would be the liquid phase. All right, uh, one, um, uranium hexafluoride sublimes rather than melts at one atmosphere of pressure. Uh, sublimation is going from the gaseous, from the solid phase to the gaseous phase immediately without you know, going from solid to liquid to gas. Um, and so at one atmosphere of pressure, you can see that it goes from solid immediately to gas. Um, at one atmosphere, there's no way for uh, the solid to turn into liquid. So one is correct. Two. At two atmospheres and 45 degrees uh, Celsius, only solid uranium hexafluoride is present at equilibrium. Uh, two atmospheres and about 45 degrees Celsius is about here. And yes, that is at the solid phase. So two also checks out. Therefore, our answer is both one and two, which is answer choice C.
Let's move on to 17. How many nearest neighbors does each silicon atom have in a crystal of silicon? Well, we need to find out how many bonds silicon forms. And uh, silicon is in this column of the periodic table. And these compounds all form uh, four uh, bonds. You know, carbon uh, forms uh, four bonds and so does silicon. So in a uh, crystal of silicon, you would also have four bonds or four neighbors. So our answer is A. The last question is 18. A sample of methanol is introduced into an evacuated chamber with a movable piston. The pressure is measured as a function of the volume of the container with the, where, while the temperature is maintained at 50 degrees Celsius. And the graph below is obtained. Which statement best describes the system? Let's just draw out what the system is going to look like. You basically have some sort of container with a piston. Um, the piston just means you can vary your volume. So that'll be my piston. And you have some sort of uh, methanol in there. Let's look at the graph. As you can see, um, as you increase the volume, which means moving the piston up, uh, the pressure initially stays constant and then it dips below. That's indicative of having some sort of liquid in the container, um, but also it's gas on top. Um, methanol is a volatile liquid, so it's going to have some sort of gas above the liquid. And let's see what's happening. As you increase the volume initially from 20 to 60, the pressure stays the same. So what is happening? Well, as you increase the size of your um, chamber by moving the piston up, um, the pressure is staying constant. And so how would you keep the pressure constant if you're keeping the same number of moles of methanol? Well, that means more of your liquid is going to evaporate and turn into the gaseous form. So you're going to have less and less liquid and more and more gas. And that gas uh, is going to make the pressure stay the same, even though you're increasing volume. But as you can see, after a certain point, uh, increasing the volume just decreases the pressure. What that means is that after a certain point when the volume is really big, um, the piston is really high up, uh, at that point you're not going to have any more liquid left. Um, you're just going to have gas and as you increase the volume that the gas is in, uh, the pressure is going to go down. Alright, so we haven't even looked at the question. Uh, which statement best describes this system? Let's go through our answer choices and see which one is the right answer. A, at volumes below 60 mils, methanol is only present in the liquid phase. That's not true. At, at 60 uh, mils, before 60 mils, as we discussed, this is in the liquid and the gaseous form. So A is wrong. B, at volumes above 60 mils, methanol is only present in the gaseous phase. That is correct. Um, after 60 mils, it is only present in the gaseous phase, and that's why as you increase the volume, the pressure is also going down. And you can see that the pressure is going down in a very characteristic fashion. Um, Boyle's law tells you that pressure is inversely proportional to volume. And so if you were to graph that out, that is the shape that that relationship forms. It's an inverse relationship which has a shape like this. So yes, B. Uh, volumes above 60 mils, methanol is only present in the gaseous phase. That is correct. C. If the process were repeated at 60 degrees Celsius, the point at which the pressure begins to decrease would shift to higher volume. Well, if you increase the, uh, the temperature, um, it would be way easier for the liquid to evaporate into its gaseous form. So you wouldn't need to increase the volume that as much to uh, be in the gaseous form, the only gaseous form. So this is not true. Um, the, the point would actually shift to a lower volume. So you, you might have something like um, this, uh, something like that. So just the, the fact that you would need less volume to um, make it all in the gaseous form. So C is wrong. And then D, if more methanol were added to the container, the pressure at uh, 20 mils, uh, the pressure at volume equals 20 mils would increase. That is also not true. Uh, vapor pressure is only dependent on one thing, and that is temperature. You could add more methanol to this system, and it would still have the same uh, vapor pressure to begin with. Um, so D is incorrect. Therefore, the answer is B. And that was questions 13 through 18, um, the states of matter section. I hope that was helpful. I hope you were able to learn something. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you later. Peace.